In this video, I'm going to demonstrate on myself the muscles that affect the elbow and some into the forearm as well. Now, I'll also cover a little bit about some bony landmarks, even though we can't really palpate that much. So when we think about the elbow in itself, so when we flex and extend, then obviously the movement of flexion is going to come from, well, there's a few muscles. We've got the biceps, short head and long head, which come up. So the short head goes on to the coracoid process of the scapula, and then the long head will penetrate through and insert, well, in fact, originate from the supraglenoid tubercle just above the glenoid fossa. Those two tendons come down and insert into the radial tuberosity, and also there's a, a deep investing fascia of the forearm in here. So the bicep brachii muscle is an elbow flexor, but it mainly will supinate, okay? So the bicep supinates and then continues elbow flexion, shoulder flexion. They call it like the food muscle. You've got an apple, so you supinate, you elbow flex, and you shoulder flex, so it does three movements. A muscle deep to that is known as the brachialis, and then that will only go into the ulna, so it's not involved in, in rotation, not like the biceps, which goes to the radial tuberosity because it's part of a radial ulna joint for supination along here. And we've also got a muscle called brachioradialis, which comes from the lateral aspect of the humerus, the supracondylar ridge, and comes down onto the radial styloid process. So if I do that, then you can see the brachioradialis along here. That muscle can also, if your arm is pronation, then it can supinate to neutral, and if it's supination, it can then pronate to neutral as well. So you can actually pronation and supination as well. So they are the main muscles that will elbow flex. The tricep muscles along here. So the triceps, we've got three heads. So we've got a lateral head, we've got a medial head, and we've got the long head. The long head will come from the infraglenoid tubercle of the uh, scapula, and then the other two heads will go onto the humerus, and they'll all insert onto the olecranon process on the posterior part here. So that'll be the main extension. The long head will also assist in extension of the shoulder and also adduction of the shoulder as well. But the three triceps are mainly for elbow extension. Works with a small muscle known as the anconius or anconeus, depends how you call it, which will come from the lateral epicondyle and it goes to the olecranon. So there's a small muscle that will also assist in elbow extension along here. Now, the bony landmark here, so this is called the lateral epicondyle, and these muscles, apart from the anconius, will actually come down into the forearm. So this area where we commonly get something like a lateral epicondylitis is normally from the, the common extensor origin. And then on here, we have many muscles. So we've got the extensor carpi radialis. We've got a long muscle called longus. We've also got an extensor carpi radialis brevis, which affects the middle finger along here. We've also got extensor carpi ulnaris, which is on the ulnar side, which will extend the wrist and ulna deviate, whereas radialis will extend the wrist and radially deviate. We've also got extensor digitorum, which affects the digits, okay? Uh, hence the word extensor digitorum from the same area. And we've also got extensor digiti minimi, which affects only the little finger, so it extends the little finger. And they come from the common extensor origin around the lateral epicondyle. On the medial side, on the medial epicondyle, just here, this bony landmark, we've got many muscles that are attached to the common flexor origin here. So we've got a long muscle, not everybody has, I'm not sure if I've got one actually, I don't think I have, called the palmaris longus, which goes into the palmar surface here, part of the, the fascia connection within this area, and that originates from this area. We've got the flexor digitorum superficialis, which is the superficial muscle to flex the digits along here. We've also got the flexor carpi ulnaris, which comes down to this side here, or actually to the pisiform, so it actually flexes the wrist and ulna deviates. And we've actually got the flexor carpi radialis, which will flex the wrist and radially deviate. And we've also got a small muscle, which is involved in pronation, and is called the pronator teres. So again, we've got many muscles that will attach to that area. I'm surprised I remembered all them. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Okay, so we've got the muscles that have gone through that affect the elbow. 
So we've done elbow flexion, elbow extension, we've done pronation, okay, because you've got pronator teres. Also, there's a muscle deeper called the pronator quadratus. And for supination, we've also got a muscle called the, the supinator. Okay, so there's many muscles that I've covered and also some bony landmarks, the lateral epicondyle, the medial epicondyle, and the lecheron process. There's also a radial head just here. And the radius is interesting because wherever bone comes in, um, there's a, the, where the head is, is there's actually a neck on it, and then the, the radius will turn, and there's a ligament that is circular called the annular ligament along here. Okay, so be careful because where you feel the lateral epicondyle come down, it can also be tender on palpation, and you might find it's the radial head that's causing the symptoms rather than it being from a tennis elbow. So there's also a little bit of information as well yeah, about um, some conditions with the elbow region. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching the presentation.